Hello and welcome to Rogue Artisans and Crafters, winner of the 2018 Southern Oregon Television Awards for Best Arts and Culture Show. I'm your host, David Glamour Dave Ninow. And here with Rogue Artisans and Crafters, we like to feature local artists here in Southern Oregon, talk about their lives as artists, talk about their work, their art <coughs> process, what drives them as artists. And so today, as my featured guest, I have John Lamby. I found John uh, a few months ago uh, while visiting uh, Art and Soul Gallery here in Ashland. Uh, he was working in the gallery one day and we talked and, uh, and so today we finally get to have John on to talk about his work as an artist and today happens to also be, he happens to be the last uh, artist featured for 2018. So uh, next set of art shows for Rogue Artisans and Crafters will be in 2019 so look for that. Uh, and so we welcome John Lambie to the show and uh, welcome John to, uh, to gain to talk about your work as an artist. Well, Thanks for having me here, Glamour Dave. <laughs> You're welcome. So, John, you do, uh, uh, you tend to do kind of like uh, abstract style kinds of work. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, a lot of your work tends to like have a lot of real brightness to it from, from work that I've seen. Uh, and so, uh, let's begin with by how long have you been working as an artist and what brought you to doing the art that you're doing? Uh, I've been painting, <laughs> Really, since 2013. I started okay. very late in life. I put my artistry in other areas, but uh, um, what brought me to do it? I was living in Scotland at the time. Yeah. Um, I was sitting down. My house was right on the harbor lo overlooking the North Sea, and I was sitting on the harbor one day with a sketchbook and, and an ink pen drawing birds and buildings and, and boats in the harbor. And, uh, a friend of mine walked by with her dog. Uh, she's uh, an artist, a uh, wonderful artist, and has a little bitty studio there in this small fishing village, and said, uh, John, those are wonderful. When are you going to paint those? And I said, no, no, I'm just, just doodling. Uh -huh. And she said, no, you really should take that and, and paint it. And I said, yeah, I, I don't know how to do that. Uh, I, I just like to draw and doodle. Yeah. And, and she said, well, you've never taken classes? I said, no. And, she said, well, uh, this weekend we have a two-day uh, oil painting class from uh, David Gray, uh, uh, an artist in, from coming over from Ireland. Why don't you take the class? It's 100 pounds, and I at the time thought, well, why don't I? It'd be a good weekend. So I yeah. took a two-day class from uh, this wonderful teacher, and we produced an oil painting in those two days. Yeah. And it still may be the best thing I ever painted. <laughs> Your very first piece. Very first piece, and I was hooked. Yeah. Uh, I went out and bought the cheapest paints and the cheapest brushes and yeah. the cheapest canvases I could find and started painting cheap paintings. Yeah. Well, and, uh, and just kept going. Yeah, right. And so that's been about five years now that you've been uh, yeah. doing this. Yeah. And, uh, and so how long were you... Uh, uh, there, uh, that was right at the, uh, that was the last three months I was in Scotland. Uh, uh -huh. I bought a house there in, in 2002 uh -huh. and moved there in 2007, and uh, and it was just about three months before I left, right? Okay, and then uh, from there you moved to Ashland, from or? there I moved to LA for uh, uh, almost two years, okay. I didn't have a big plan at that point in my life, and I had a couple of friends in L.A. say, uh, they knew I was an actor and said, come to L.A., we'll put you in front of cameras. Yeah, okay. Uh, but it was uh, almost two years after that, I, um, I got a call from Valerie Rochelle, uh, the new director at the Oregon Cabaret Theater, and uh -huh. said, uh, would you be interested? And in, I just was given your name by a friend as a recommendation would you be interested in the show we're doing, this part? I said, sure. I sent her a, a video audition, yeah. and she sent me a contract. Yeah, okay. And I came up here for three months, uh, three and a half months to do a show and bought a house before the show was over. Well, okay. Because it saying. felt like home. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, Ashland's a, a wonderful community to, to has a, a really strong artistic community, so. Yeah, it's, it's great. Yeah. I, I love it. Yeah. So, uh, and, and then you've gotten your work uh, is, can be seen at our Art and Soul Gallery here yes. uh, in Ashland. I, I, I have six pieces hanging down there right now. If anybody wants to go look at them, uh, they're some of my favorites. 
and uh, I'm very proud to be uh, an artist there. Yeah, yeah, it's a great, wonderful gallery, and I've had I've featured other artists from the gallery here mm -hmm. on the show, and uh, it's like a regular uh, visit when I'm walking downtown Ashland. So yeah, yeah. So now. Uh, you know, as you've gotten into doing the painting work, I mean, your work mm -hmm. tends to be kind of on the abstract end of things. What got you into doing that as like your kind of like your style? What attracted you to the style that you're doing? Uh, I started doing abstracts um, uh, about a year after I started. I started painting, everything was representational. Mm -hmm. But uh, even from the couple of representational pieces, uh, that are here, yeah. you can see that they still look very abstract. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I, I just like, uh, I, I really enjoy the emotional feelings that uh, colors and especially deep and dramatic colors mm -hmm. can bring. Yeah. Now one of your very first uh, pieces happens to be here on display and that's yeah. the barn owl, right? That's Yes, the white owl. Yeah. Looks like it's coming out of some dark cave or cavern. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was one of the one of the very I painted that in Scotland. That's also one of the few oils here. There are only a couple. Right. But uh, at first I did everything with oil paints, mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> I couldn't get the hang of abstracts. It dries too yeah. fast. Right. I tend to want to stand and look at something for a long time, and and then uh, with an oil painting you can come back the next day or the two days later yeah. and, and still blend the paints. That's and, right. Yeah. And uh, I, I I was very comfortable with the oil paints. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that was one of the, the first ones that I painted. And so color. the majority of your, paint, uh, your paintings that you do are done in oil, or are you still doing acrylics? I, I'm using both, but I'm primarily acrylic now. Okay, all right. And, um, and then uh, another one of your images that's like right behind me here is, uh, your, depicts your son. Yeah. Right? Yeah, he's uh, uh, squatting on a beach looking over a beautiful, beautiful... Pacific Ocean. That's an Oregon beach, as a matter of fact. Okay. And uh, yeah, I uh, I particularly like that that photo a great deal, and uh, it's called "Contemplating the Universe." Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I um, some of my some of my work. I when I see a photograph that I that I really like that I take, um, I can incorporate part of that into the painting. Mm -hmm. A part of it. Yeah. I, t I take pictures of, of clouds and sunsets because yeah. I, like, I like combining uh, different elements in sunsets. Um, but that, that is actually from a photograph. Yeah, okay. Now, uh, also you have, you brought with you is this painting right behind me. Yeah. Uh, that is a work in progress. It is a work in progress. Right. Uh, or lack of progress, both. <laughs> Sometimes it works in both directions. And how and when did you start this particular piece? I started that piece um, a couple of weeks ago. Okay. Uh, I've been busy, so it's just something I sort of came back to. Mm -hmm. It's got. Uh, uh, I tend to layer a background, and then I work on the background in a second or third layer, and then I literally a fourth or fifth layer to finish the background mm -hmm. before I start putting in the elements I want. Um, this one's was closer to being finished uh, two days ago when I said, uh, do you want me to bring, <laughs> bring one in that's not finished? And uh, I made a couple of uh, mistakes. Actually, it's just I painted exactly what I wanted, but I didn't like the way it looked. Right. And, uh, and there are a couple of elements in there that I'm, I really need to work on. And the first one is going to be that standing stone that's on the... Uh, on your right side, on yeah, the painting's right. left side, uh, I wanted this. I wanted it to the whole painting to be sort of magical and and uh, um, fairy-like and mm -hmm. and non-realistic. I love drawing trees, but I like drawing trees that uh, have different uh, elements about them that are not realistic at all. Yeah, uh, right. And that tree sort of reminds me of of uh, Game of Thrones, you know, the, the <laughs> yeah. white tree with the red leaves. Yeah. But uh, uh, 
Yeah, I, I wanted that standing stone there, and I, I looked through photos of standing stones that I took in Scotland. Mm -hmm. And there's an actual standing stone that looks just like that, mm -hmm. and I thought it would be brilliant. Yeah. And I painted it on there, and uh, the more I look at it, the more it looks like an old, decrepit uh, grandfather clock. <laughs> you know? uh, not a standing stone at all. So I am going to uh, expand that, make it a little larger, yeah. different, change the shape. Yeah. Uh, and then there's some, uh, uh, the row of colored hills behind it in the distance. Uh, uh, I often see hills that are under a certain light, mm -hmm. especially dusk, yeah. where they are completely purple or completely dark and there's a completely lit hill in front or behind it. Uh, and that's where I was going with that, but it's not, it's not done yet. Yeah. It's, it's, and then yeah. I have to add the final elements to the golden hill. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, in terms of the process of creation, I mean, uh, is that kind of like a, is it kind of an often experience in terms of, you know, you get into a certain point and you have an element in a painting and, and you just don't find satisfaction and you're like constantly kind of like fiddling, working on, on just one piece of, a, of, a, of an element in a painting? Yes. Also, I, I, I can be completely happy with the painting, completely finished, and have it be one of my favorites, and then go back uh, later if it hasn't sold yet, uh -huh. and keep looking at it uh, in my own home and go, I want to add more texture, more depth. I want, the, I want there to be ridges. I want there to be uh, a, 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 a line of something through it. Uh, this blue one's an example of that. It yeah. was uh, pretty originally all blue boxes yeah. and, and a couple of odd you know, tan ones, and I really liked it. But I've added little elements to it every once in a while when I go by. Uh, it's, uh, it's like people that have uh, uh, um, work done on their face. You know? <laughs> I'm sure they're happy with their face, but now there's, they, there's a line they want to get rid of yeah. or uh, you know, yeah. a lip they want a little yeah, bigger. That's, that's what I do with my yeah. paintings. And so that's kind of like an often kind of a thing that you're doing? Yeah, yeah. No, you're I, just, I you're have always a, tweaking, basically. You're, I have a great deal of fun with my paintings. I'm never sure when they're done. Yeah. But when I, the first couple of years, every time I met an artist, that's the first question I'd ask. How, when, how do you know when you're done? Yeah. And I've asked that, art, that question of other artists yeah. uh, on the shows. When do you know that you're done? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I have two answers to that question. Uh, one is, I really like it just like it is, mm -hmm. and I don't want to put too much in and make a mistake. Yeah. That's when I'm done. The other one is when I am just so done with that painting. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just put it aside. And, yeah. And I've had people look at paintings that I thought were not done and went and and buy them from me. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you never know. Yeah. Now, uh, typically, what's the length of time that you typically spend on the on the creation of a painting? Uh, one that uh, that I know how is going to end, like the painting of my son looking mm -hmm. over the ocean. When I know how it's going to end, I can I can. Uh, that was very fast. And it was not an easy painting for me to paint, but I finished that in a week. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the one that we're talking about back here, yeah. uh, I'm doing on consignment, and uh, uh, I have an open-ended time frame, which is great. Yeah. But uh, I thought it was going to be done by yesterday, and then I got, I finished my standing stone and decided it looked like a grandfather clock, uh, and uh, I've got at least another week on that. Yeah. Okay. Because I'm traveling and I'm yeah. doing things, I'm going to take this up back to Vancouver with me uh, after the show and work on it up there and bring it back yeah. and then I can present it to uh, the couple that is purchasing it. Right, yeah. And I, if they see the show, <laughs> you all are the only ones seeing this painting yeah. for the first time. So yeah. if, hopefully they, they won't see the show. <laughs> but I'll send them a link to it yeah. so they can hear about it yeah. uh, uh, after... Yeah. after they, they see it for the yeah, first time. Right. Well, now we have uh, a, a slideshow of some of your other work that the uh, control room can bring up. Okay. And we'll talk about some of the pieces that come up on that. And uh, so let's uh, see. If... Or we can keep talking. Yeah, so there, there we, we go. go. I um, love that one. That's an oil painting. That's one I painted in Scotland too. That was about my fourth or fifth painting. Um, 
That's the Isle of Skye in the distance. Oh, okay. Uh, that's backlit. And uh, uh, that's one of my favorites because I love the dramatic color. And uh, it's sold. Yeah. And, uh, and whenever anyone looked at that, they said, wow, that sky is, is so surreal. It's, uh, you know, your imagination's amazing. And I have to tell them, no, that was what I saw that night. Yeah. Now, I didn't stand there like plain air and paint it there, yeah. but I went home and painted how it made me feel. Yeah. But it looked like that yeah. in Scotland. Yeah. And uh, that's another Scottish painting, is that? that yeah, that's like, and that's like right behind me. That's right behind me. Yeah. Okay, that's this painting. Yeah. Uh, and that's uh, also the Isle of Skye. Yeah. Uh, and uh, again, I, the moon is completely unrealistically large, but I wanted to do a big moon coming yeah. up. Right, yeah. And then that's your image of your, of your son. That's my son. Right. Contemplating the universe. Yeah, okay. And uh, let's go on to the next. That's interesting. That's very large. That's yes, sitting outside. It it's too actually big to bring in. Uh, here in the studio, but it's so large, and we can't like incorporate it into the set design. Yeah. But uh, that's uh, that's one of your pieces that I found I was really attracted to because it's just the, the it's just the overall brightness of it really yeah. appeals to me. Well, um, I'm still so new at this that every time I every time I I paint it. It teaches me something new. I try something different all the time. Mm -hmm. And I had taken a class from uh, Flora Boley up in Portland and learned how to do drip. And um, I, I, I did three or four, when I came home from that, I did three paintings using that method. Uh -huh. And that is a very large painting, yes, and I call is. it Tiffany Glass, because yeah. it reminds yeah. me of that. Yeah, it definitely gives you that feel. Definitely, yeah. I see that, yeah. Let's go on to the next. Ah. That was a, a, a painting that uh, is sitting back east now. Um, I, wanted to, I wanted to go back to doodling buildings. Uh -huh. And uh, for those people who've been to Amsterdam, um, the little house next to the orange one in the middle is uh, Anne Frank's hiding place uh -huh. in okay. Amsterdam. Uh -huh. And that bridge actually comes across it and the river flows. Uh, it's not a river, it's a canal flows yeah. through it. But uh, again, that's me going fanciful with the coloring, but the actual corner block is uh, Anne Frank's house. Yeah. And because of that, um, uh, what you, can, you and I can't see it looking at the screen. I have no idea if the people can see it. There's, uh, I also wanted to practice putting writing. And there's a script that covers the top to bottom, right to left. And it's part of uh, Anne Frank's last written letter before she was discovered where she knows that there's evil in the world but she just doesn't believe evil will survive mm -hmm. that she believes in people and their their better nature and uh, I put that in there and I put some uh, also in the in the very artistic abstract sky um, shapes of doves and and, and spiritual things flying off in the distance. Yeah. All right, so let's, uh, let's go on to the next. I love that one. That one is, uh, I painted that up here in Ashland. Okay. Uh, it's an acrylic. And I have a friend in Paso Robles, California, who has his own vineyard. And uh, uh, that's, that's Jim's vineyard. And um, I, I loved when I was visiting seeing that one beautiful tree on top of this hill and uh, it was a very windy day and uh, there were white clouds in the sky so I, I just uh, again I most of the things that I see and paint I draw from memory later mm -hmm. but uh, um, I, that, that's what that was. Yeah. Okay. That's one of those very abstract uh, I'm practicing using my fingers uh, I want to put elements and bits into it that are not related symbols and uh, that's uh, Mother Nature is that large figure to the left. And okay. I have these uh, embryonic explosions of life. And uh, the concept I, I had in that painting was that uh, uh, Mother Nature survives. Yeah. You know, we're not going to kill Mother Nature. No, we're not. Yeah. She's going to be around long after we're all gone. That's right, yeah. Uh, again, a wonderful representational but yet abstract 
figure of a woman, a powerful woman, a, a woman of passion and beauty. And uh, uh, it is not a painting of my daughter. It okay. is not a representation of her, but it's absolutely a represent representation of her spirit and her character and, and, uh, and her purpose. And, uh, and uh, so I had more fun designing a dress and making it flow as she's moving towards you. And, and, uh, and it's uh, named after my daughter, Sarah. Okay. All right, and uh, what's this one here? <laughs> That's, uh, I, I wanted to practice, again, I wanted to try something with uh, russet colors, rust literally, and, and, uh, um, and some browns and, and grays background, and um, I call that big oil, because uh, at what I was thinking, <laughs> again, Everybody says, so what is that? And, and I say, well, what does it look like to you? And, and whatever they see is what it really is, because yeah. that's the nature of abstract that's art. That's right, yeah. But I called it big oil because uh, uh, I had sim this symbols of, of previous life, leaves and, and layers of, of the earth. Okay. And uh, uh, this devouring creature yeah. sucking up all of that. and. Right going to a different purpose yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I've had pe uh, that was purchased and somebody said really can I is it okay if I don't tell anybody what the title is yeah. I said you go right ahead <laughs> she just thought it was a beautiful thing yeah okay and uh, that's an Ashland one uh, English country garden over to friend's house okay. had all those flowers growing and put that together now blue's my favorite color and this so one is is mine. A, this one appeals to me a lot yeah yeah it's uh, Winter, winter cold, yeah, and uh, that was started in Scotland, and it came over to the U.S. unfinished, and it was one of the first things I finished in L.A., yeah. and that's a combination of, of uh, acrylic sand oils. Okay, you, I found out early you can't put uh, acrylic on top of oil, yeah. but you can put the oil on top of the yeah. acrylic. Yeah, uh, that was the first painting front to back I painted here. I had just visited the the Rogue. Uh, uh, gone up the, actually uh, driving to Crater Lake, but stopped at that rogue um, canyon oh, yeah. waterway pull-off. Mm -hmm. Walked through there, uh, saw a blue heron. Um, and there's no waterfalls that big, but there are lots of beautiful waterfalls. And again, that's one I walked home and, and painted it from the feeling I yeah. had looking at that, yeah. that site. Yeah. And... Uh... <laughs> That, I painted that on a bet. Yeah? Yeah. I was in L.A. and uh, a friend walked into my room and I had, I don't know, 40 different paints. And he said, uh, how do you decide what colors to use? And I said, well, there's a color wheel and they match and there are pops and things. He said, uh, I'll bet you a beer you can't do a painting with all of the paints on your table. <laughs> uh, two nights later, I said, here it is. It's called T-shirt stacks. Yeah. And... Uh, <laughs> And he took me out for a beer. Okay, well, you got, yeah. And that sold. It's uh, in somebody's uh, big, beautiful washing drying room now. Yeah, okay. All right. Oh, that's an interesting too. That uh, I wanted to try a multimedia, and that's the first one I ever tried. Um, the Buddha is a cutout of um, a Buddha that was in. Uh, National Geographic magazine, and the flags that cross the top are, are miniature prayer flags, Buddhist yeah. prayer flags, but those are actual flags hanging over the front of the, the painting. Yeah, okay. And uh, uh, the rest is uh, my feeling about uh, um, Nepalese oriental yeah. um, kinds of feelings and colors. And, um, that was a commission, uh, and I was very pleased with that. Um, the dragonfly what... is a symbol of, of great good fortune, yeah. and uh, um, the gal wanted uh, a dragonfly, yeah. and she loved my very dramatic skyscrapes. Mm -hmm. So yeah. uh, I combined both of those, and uh, again, another large painting. Yeah, that's one of my uh, one of my favorites in that in that whole series. That's 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're near the end of of our interview, John. Okay. And so, uh, how do uh, how do people get a hold of you for either commissions or to purchase your art? Um, I have uh, an art website that I need to update, but it's uh, John Lambie Art. Dot com. Yeah. Okay. And they can uh, get my phone number and call me. Uh, anybody, whether they're on my friends list or not, can see all of all of my paintings on Facebook. If you go through the photos, yeah. um, you can. Uh, I, most of my paintings I sell off Facebook. Yeah, okay. And you can also walk today into uh, uh, Art and Soul Gallery in downtown Ashland, and I have uh, six of of my favorite paintings hanging there right now. Um, and uh, I love that. Yeah. Uh, August seems to be a good month for me. Yeah. Not sure why. I sold seven paintings right. in August. Well, what's yeah. the general price range for your art? Uh, mine are, are cheaper than most. Um, maybe that's just a reflection of, of the joy I have in it, and I love my friends uh, to be able to purchase them. And most of my friends are artists themselves yeah. and have that kind of uh, purse. Right. Yeah. So. Uh, um, the smaller ones um, can sell for 350, 400, okay. and uh, the larger ones, um, I, I'm usually selling around seven, eight, nine hundred. Okay. And yeah. uh, uh, when I was in LA, the prices were much higher, yeah. and came up here and saw, well, that wasn't going to fly. Yeah. <laughs> so. Okay. Well, John, I thank you for coming on the show and for being my last guest of 2018. Uh, and so uh, this wraps up. The last uh, Rogue Artisans and Crafters episode for 2018. You can uh, look for new episodes in 2019. Uh, and so I thank John for coming on the show. I thank my crew for all their help in putting the show together. And I thank you, the Rogue Valley, for watching the show. And uh, we will see you next time and see you in 2019. I wish to thank and, you for uh, thank watching you, this Rogue Artisans and Crafters. And watch this program on demand by visiting RVTV. You can also follow our show on Facebook by visiting and liking our official show page. Just search for Rogue Artisans and Crafters. You can follow me, David Glamour Dave Nino, online at my YouTube channel and on Facebook. If you like this show and wish to support me in my show productions at RVTV, you can visit my Patreon page at patreon.com slash Glamour Dave. You can watch this show on Tuesday evenings at 8 p.m. and Thursday evenings at 11.30 p.m. We want to thank our crew who have made it possible to put this program together. Producer and host David Glamour Dave Nino is winner of the 2018 Southern Oregon Television Awards for Best New Producer and for Best Arts and Culture Show for Rogue Artisans and Crafters. 